Avoidance slash Restrictive Food Intake Disorder, Wikipedia Article Audio Avoidance slash Restrictive Food Intake Disorder, previously known as Selective Eating Disorder, is a type of eating disorder, as well as feeding disorder, where the consumption of certain foods is limited based on the food's appearance, smell, taste, texture, brand, presentation, or a past negative experience with the food. The fifth edition of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders renamed Feeding Disorder of Infancy or Early Childhood to Avoidance-Restrictive Food Intake Disorder, and broadened the diagnostic criteria. Previously defined as a disorder exclusive to children and adolescents, the DSM-5 broadened the disorder to include adults who limit their eating and are affected by related physiological or psychological problems, but who do not fall under the definition of another eating disorder. Definition Signs and Symptoms The DSM-5 defines the following diagnostic criteria. In previous years, the DSM was not inclusive in recognizing all of the challenges associated with feeding and eating disorders in three main domains. Children are often picky eaters, this does not necessarily mean they meet the criteria for an ARFID diagnosis. In addition, self-identification as having ARFID may contribute to ARFID. Sufferers of ARFID have an inability to eat certain foods. Safe foods may be limited to certain food types and even specific brands. In some cases, afflicted individuals will exclude whole food groups, such as fruits or vegetables. Sometimes excluded foods can be refused based on color. Some may only like very hot or very cold foods, very crunchy or hard to chew foods, or very soft foods or avoid sauces. Most sufferers of ARFID will still maintain a healthy or normal body weight. There are no specific outward appearances associated with ARFID. Sufferers can experience physical gastrointestinal reactions to adverse foods such as retching, vomiting, or gagging. Some studies have identified symptoms of social avoidance due to their eating habits. Most however, would change their eating habits if they could. Comorbidity The determination of the cause of ARFID has been difficult due to the lack of diagnostic criteria and concrete definition. However, many have proposed other mental disorders that are comorbid with ARFID. There are different kinds of subcategories identified for ARFID. ARFID and Autism Symptoms of ARFID are usually found with symptoms of other disorders. Some form of feeding disorder is found in 80% of children that also have a developmental disability. Children often exhibit symptoms of obsessive-compulsive disorder and autism. Although many people with ARFID have symptoms of these disorders, they usually do not qualify for a full diagnosis. Strict behavior patterns and difficulty adjusting to new things are common symptoms in patients that are on the autistic spectrum. A study done by Shrek at Pennsylvania State University compared the eating habits of children with ASD and typically developing children. After analyzing their eating patterns, they suggested that the children with some degree of ASD have a higher degree of selective eating. These children were found to have similar patterns of selective eating and favored more energy-dense foods such as nuts and whole grains. Eating a diet of energy-dense foods could put these children at a greater risk for health problems such as obesity and other chronic diseases due to the high fat and low fiber content of energy-dense foods. Due to the tie to ASD, children are less likely to outgrow their selective eating behaviors and most likely should meet with a clinician to address their eating issues. 
specific food avoidances could be caused by food phobias that cause great anxiety when a person is presented with new or feared foods. Most eating disorders are related to a fear of gaining weight. Those who suffer from ARFID do not have this fear, but the psychological symptoms and anxiety created is similar. Some sufferers of ARFID have fears such as emetophobia or a fear of choking. Clinicians will often follow a diagnostic checklist to test whether or not an individual is exhibiting behaviors and characteristics that may lead to a diagnosis of ARFID. Clinicians will look at the variety of foods an individual consumes, as well as the portion size of accepted foods. They will also question how long the avoidance or refusal of particular foods has lasted, and if there are any associated medical concerns, such as malnutrition. Unlike most eating disorders, there may be a higher rate of ARFID in young boys, than there is in young girls. ARFID as an anxiety disorder With time the symptoms of ARFID can lessen and can eventually disappear without treatment. However, in some cases treatment will be needed as the symptoms persist into adulthood. The most common type of treatment for ARFID is some form of cognitive behavioral therapy. Working with a clinician can help to change behaviors more quickly than symptoms may typically disappear without treatment. Also hypnotherapy may be used. In that it lessens the anxiety associated with food. Clinical Diagnosis There are support groups for adults with ARFID. Treatment Children can benefit from a four-stage in-home treatment program based on the principles of systematic desensitization. The four stages of the treatment are record, reward, relax and review. For adults For children Disturbance in eating or feeding, as evidenced by one or more of, substantial weight loss, nutritional deficiency, dependence on a feeding tube or dietary supplements, significant psychosocial interference. Eating disorders not otherwise specified was an all-inclusive, placeholder group for all individuals that presented challenges with feeding, the category of feeding disorder of infancy slash early childhood was noted to be too broad, limiting specification when treating these behaviors. There are children and youth who present feeding challenges but do not fit within any existing categories to date. Sensory-based avoidance, where the individual refuses food intake based on smell, texture, color, brand, presentation, a lack of interest in consuming the food, or tolerating it nearby food being associated with fear-evoking stimuli that have developed through a learned history. In the record stage, children are encouraged to keep a log of their typical eating behaviors without attempting to change their habits as well as their cognitive feelings. The reward stage involves systematic desensitization. Children create a list of foods that they might like to try eating someday. These foods may not be drastically different from their normal diet, but perhaps a familiar food prepared in a different way. Because the goal is for the children to try new foods, children are rewarded when they sample new foods. The relaxation stage is most important for those children that suffer severe anxiety when presented with unfavorable foods. Children learn to relax to reduce the anxiety that they feel. Children work through a list of anxiety-producing stimuli and can create a storyline with relaxing imagery and scenarios. Often these stories can also include the introduction of new foods with the help of a real person or fantasy person. Children then listen to this story before eating new foods as a way to imagine themselves participating in an expanded variety of foods while relaxed. The final stage, review is important to keep track of the child's progress.
it is important to include both one-on-one -on -one sessions with the child, as well as with the parent in order to get a clear picture of how the child is progressing and if the relaxation techniques are working.